Hi everyone and uh, welcome to another Facebook Live Paint Along. So hopefully we will have no technical problems with this one. Fingers crossed. But I do feel a bit sometimes like I am um, I, I am jinxed with these. So we will see how it goes. So bear with me if we get any um, technical issues. Uh, I'm used to doing these 18 months of doing these in Zoom and I'm only just started doing these with uh, Facebook Live and the joy of Facebook Live is that I can't see you guys which I don't like um, hopefully you'll be chatting to me lots in the comments and uh, get a little bit of feedback from you that way so that is always nice. So we've got a few minutes to go before the session properly starts. And I am just going to... Uh, so we've obviously got a llama up here. Um, I've done this llama painting a few times. So I thought I'd just show you some of the different colour options that you can have. So this is... We've got green. We've got a blue one that I've done in the past as well. Um, looks lovely with the gold on as well and then if you're if you're more of a pink person um, we have our very girly pink one pink and gold with a crown looks awesome so whichever way you decide to do it the basic principle is the same whether you decide to go blue green pink yellow um, you can do whatever you like color wise for the background for the actual llama itself as you can see one here you can again you can go do a patchy one you can go with a brown one you can have a green llama if you wanted to the principle is still absolutely the same and I will talk you through it as we go while I've uh, got a few of you on here I'm just going to run through what else we've got coming up so uh, just buy everyone a little bit more time while we're waiting for them to sign in so let me see can I see how many we've got six six people so far yay so um tomorrow i am painting so i'm going to move this around so you can see the beautiful golden um mane on our unicorn so uh another i know you guys love a unicorn so here's a new one again trying some new different techniques for you to learn i've used gold and silver in this one but as always you know you can change the colors so if you haven't got those colors it's not the end of the world we can we can do something else with it um also on this week i have got i'm going to do this coming up from the bottom so we have this spotty fellow so i have done him oh let's straighten him up there i've done him on one of the works um canvases that it's a stretch canvas so it's a bit thicker um but i've if they're normally people use them for landscapes but i've done this one this way up because i thought he'd be quite cool with like being really tall you can do him kind of from there upwards so you get it more like that on a normal traditional size paper or canvas but i just thought i'd try something different with him so um if i'm if you're joining me i will be doing him the tall version and um these canvases they're three pounds from the work so not not trying to bankrupt you too much there i'm going to move him to the side um also coming up this week um i always get lots of requests for our tiger tiger session and i realized i didn't have a recording of him so he had to come back we'll be painting him also this week I'm sticking with the tigers going forward as well so we've got our blue tiger as well so that one I believe is next week we've got a few more classics that we're revisiting that people have asked me to redo so we've got our flamingo coming up over the next five weeks um, also our stormtrooper so if you missed out on our pop art stormtrooper um, or you know someone who's a Star Wars fan or maybe a, a Bowie, bit of a Bowie fan, um, that's perfect session for, for them or for a gift. I've also got this one coming up. Um, so also like a deer, don't we? 
so this is some interesting techniques going on here you'll need your cotton buds for this one for our cherry blossom that's drifting off on the breeze for anyone who's a harry potter fan i've got the first in my collection of minimal harry potter portraits so i'm going to do the full lot of this lot as long as there's interest starting off with luna and then i will add more in if if i get lots of interest in booking this session over the um over the next i think she's next week so if there's lots of bookings for that one i will sort of juggle some of the later sessions around and i will um i will uh add some more harry potter ones in and then final one i'm going to show you this morning before we get started because i would think everyone's kind of here um so we've got our pug in a mug so that's just some of my sessions obviously i don't have all of maria's paintings here with me so i can't um i can't show you those so maria to do another lovely funny one of her little recordings and um and then you can see what she's got coming up you can also see those in our event pages and on eventbrite so enough of me talking about those oh i can see i've got some comments let's have a look <laughs> oh lee woke up too late okay no worries um so yeah let's get painting so i'm gonna leave i'll leave i think i'll leave our green one up here for to um to be our guide through this session but i will talk to you a little bit about um what we do with our blue so as you guys know painting it's always about breaking things down into simple shapes and so what we want to do is we're going to mix this kind of flesh tone color here so that is white if you want to get it out ready white a little bit of red a very small amount of red and if you find that your um, llama's looking a bit kind of sunburnt -y, you can add a little bit of yellow to that. It will depend on which red shade that you use. We are going to break our llama down into simple shapes. So we've got this big circle here. We've got a small circle here. We're going to join those up. We've got a big tall triangle for the neck and then basically two halves of a banana. For our ears so let's get on with that I'm gonna put these down to the side my giraffe's still up here as well so I need to make him disappear I wonder if I can make him disappear the same way as he came in so I can make him go down like that no couldn't quite do it all the way okay I am going to grab myself I'm gonna start off with a half inch flat brush just that's a good all round um, kind of general use brush I like it for just general painting and I'm going to mix myself up some of my flesh tone color so I've got white just plain old white I'm going to give myself a good portion of that Ah, oh, helps if you open the, the seal on a brand new one doesn't it so I've literally just finished another session so it will be up later if you guys want it um i did uh oh eight o'clock this morning an early start here's my white paint that i'm putting on so i give myself a good amount um yeah i started at eight o'clock with my first session this morning and i did the lazy day sloth so if you want to have a look at that that will be another um, session that will be going up on our store so I've got a little bit of red oh Lee you guys still with us I thought you were going hi Abby hello from South Africa oh which part of South Africa I so here's one of my blasts from the past I used to work for Woolworths South Africa and um, uh, used to go to Cape Town lots so <laughs> I so I've got my red and my white and I'm also going to grab a little bit of yellow just in case I need it later on so that's my three main colors the white I'm going to divide off into two halves because I'm going to have 
some of my white for my flesh tone and some of my white for my woolly coat. So I'm going to take half of it. I could have just given myself two squirts, couldn't I? That would have been better. And I'm going to dip, so you guys can see, I'm dipping literally just the very tip of my brush in my red, particularly with pastel colours. Um, it's so easy to just overwhelm your colour really, really super quickly. So it's always better just to add a tiny bit at a time so that you don't go too bright. So, and because what happens, everyone does this, you end up mixing like three massive amounts of paint that you don't use and then you kind of either end up having to waste it or you start painting lots of background canvases in those colours. So I'm getting there, I'm going to go one more with the red. So don't want to go too bright, mix it in, but we do want enough of a contrast that it's not going to, um, you, you want to be able to see the difference between our llama's face and the wool. So I'm kind of happy with that pink, but it's looking too pink for me. So depending on what colour you're using, I'm going to use, again, a bit of yellow and just start to make it a little bit more of a pale peachy colour. So I think I'm almost there. I think one more little bit of yellow. Just grab a little bit of it, mix it in, and then I'm going to go to my jar of water. Oh, hi! Oh, my goodness, Australia! Hello! Awesome! Wow, really international today. I love that. Okay, I have got my paint colour. I'm going to add one more bit of water. To scrape all the extra off that I don't want so yeah absolutely so those of you who um, those of you who um, haven't painted with me before in the comments you might see someone called Maria Maria is my lovely friend who is the other half of easily does it with me and she's going to be answering your questions and comments and heckling me in general but um she's just mentioned so not only do we have the facebook group we also have a uh, facebook page we also have a group called the artists hangout and that is specifically for you guys to put your pictures on after the session so that we can see them so if you're super proud of your painting pop it on there and we'll give you some lovely lovely feedback if you're struggling with anything and need a bit of help that's also what we're there for and I'll, I'll be honest right we always say how lovely your paintings are so don't be shy about putting them up I'm now going to start painting and the first per mark you put on your paint is on your palette no canvas is quite important so I'm going to imagine there's a big cross that runs right the way through my um, canvas or paper and I'm going to find it will cross right at the middle and that is exactly where I want to put my first mark so right smack bang in the middle of my canvas and then from that I want to imagine there's another um, another we're going to put another dot in that's I'm going to imagine it's halfway up our canvas or paper so just like that halfway and then we're going to join those two points up in a big circle, just like this. So get that circle in, get a nice good shape on it. And when you're happy with it, we're not too worried about the outsides, edges at the moment of it. When you're happy with it, have a look. So this is this section here, okay, and you might think, hmm, it's looking a bit small, it's looking a bit, well, we can't do much about it if it's a bit big, but if it, it's a bit on the small side and needs to go a bit bigger, let's do that before we do anything else, okay? So you don't want to be too far over to the left-hand side because you won't be leaving yourself enough room for the nose. 
if you go too high you won't leave yourself enough room for the ears. Our next task is to put in our llama's neck. So what we're going to do, we're going to imagine our big circle is a clock. So if we've got clock hands in the middle and the top is 12 o'clock, the right hand side is 3 o'clock and the bottom is 6 o'clock, we're going to find 6 o'clock and we're going to do a line that goes straight down to the very bottom of our canvas, just like that. So we want it to go straight down. We then want to do exactly the same thing at, from three o'clock down. So we're doing another line that comes down like this. Okay. And then we're going to make tiny, tiny slithers of triangles on either side. So it's going to be tall and pointy at the very top and it's going to come down and get a little bit, not much, just a little bit wider as we get lower. With this neck area we want to just get enough paint on our canvas to cover it without drowning it. So just use enough paint that you've got no white of your paper or your canvas showing through because we will need that to dry. So I'm blocking all of that in and then what we need to do, and you've got to be really honest with yourself with this one, the right hand line, so the three o'clock down line, does that look like you have done that really even? Because we need this to come out in a bit of a triangle. So if you've actually gone a bit wonky already and it, um, it kind of goes out slightly towards the side of the, the paper, fantastic, leave it how it is. If, however, you do need to make it a little bit wider, just like we did on the left-hand side, we're going to make this into a real thin... It's like if you went to a party and there were loads of people and there was a birthday cake and they just got a really small birthday cake by mistake and you just got this tiny, tiny little sliver of cake, which would be super disappointing, but that's what we're aiming for. We're aiming for... Do you think I haven't had my breakfast today and I'm hungry because I've talked about bananas and disappointingly thin slivers of cake? It's not good, is it? So we have got our llama's neck and the main part of our head. So when you are ready, if you guys want to give me a little thumbs up or something and I'll know you're ready to move on. So I, Maria's super fast with the comments, way faster than me. So um, there might be a little bit of a delay. But you can put done in the comments as well. And that would be awesome. Am I looking at, yeah, I'm going the wrong way with the comments. Here's the more recent ones. So, oh, okay, Gemma, you guys are a sucker for punishment too this morning. <laughs> okay, so we've got our big, awesome, we've got our big circle here, which is this bit here. And then we need a little muzzle. So we're going to go for a circle that's half the size of our big main bit. So if you imagine, you won't be able to see this, but if you imagine that there was two circles stacked on top of each other that fitted inside this big one, then we're going to do one that's that size and you've got a choice about the, per the personality now that you give your llama. So if you want a proud llama like this one, so he's looking, looking a bit smug actually, this llama. Then we're going to put our smaller circle straight out to the side. If you want a shy llama, then we're going to go down slightly because it's kind of being a bit coy and got its head down. So that is your choice. 
So I'm going to go for I'm going to go for a koi llama. So I'm going to paint in my half the size circle just like this. This one I do need to get the edges a little bit nicer than than the other one. So we've got this and then we're going to join the two circles up. So I'm going to go from just like it was a clock again, 12 o'clock on the small one and I'm going to join it up to 9 o'clock on the big one. So you've got this funny kind of a line. And then I'm going to go from probably I'd say about half past four there. So between four and five and we're going to go down to number down to number six. So if you were on going for a proud llama and it was looking straight up, you would go from 12 o'clock to nine o'clock and you would go from six o'clock to kind of between seven and eight. But the same kind of shape as we've got here. We've got this small little muzzle joining onto the big face. Again, give me a thumbs up or a done when you're ready to move on. Oh, Maria, who thought we'd be talking about shy llamas and proud llamas? <laughs> So if you can hear any funny snuffling or tapping noises in the background at the moment, one of our friends is very poorly with COVID and after her dog for her. And uh, if you're very lucky and she doesn't fall asleep before the end of the session, I'll try and grab her and show you. She is the cutest dog you've ever seen in your life. She's uh, um, half Chihuahua and half Jack Russell. And her name's Hope and she is super sweet. So, but she wants to sit on my lap all the time, which isn't great when you're painting. So, from this, we now need to put our ears on. And that's, you need to imagine that someone's got a banana and they've cut it in half right through the middle. And you'd have those two curved triangle shapes. So I'm going to start off with the first one right in the middle at 12 o'clock and I am going to do my half a banana. So it curves, goes up to a point and then comes back down again. So it's a bit like a horn. So, but we've got this nice curvy shape to it. And then I'm going to do one to the right of it that's exactly the same. So. I'm going to do my little point, I'm going to come up to the curve, Hope's desperately trying to sit on my lap right now, so she wants to come and sit on my lap which I wouldn't mind but I know as soon as I move I'm going to knock the camera, because <laughs> that, that will probably be the thing that goes wrong in this session, it takes me ages to get the camera all lined up, oh yes, yeah, so, <laughs> You're right, Maria, this is the sort of conversation that you and I have lots of. So, so Maria is doing the Friday session, and if you haven't already seen it, her cheeky chimp is absolutely stunning and amazing and much better than I could do a chimp. So, um, yeah, that would be brilliant. And Maria has got absolutely fabulous sessions coming up. And, oh, my God, she has done... So if you've seen... Um, Raya and the Last Dragon, she's done a, um, a Sisu, who is, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is absolutely beautiful and just absolutely the showstopper of our summer session. So that's towards um, the very end of the summer. So if you are going to sign up, please do some of our other ones before you get to that one. But yeah, that is definitely something to look forward to. <laughs> Hope is making lots of noise down here wanting cuddles. Once you've done your ears and everything like that and you're happy with how it's looking, give your brush a good wipe out with some tissue. So um, it's funny, do you know what? I never knew this until I started having art lessons later on in life. But if you just wipe your brush out, 
before you put it in your water it saves you having to keep going and changing your water all the time keeps your water clean which seems really super obvious but it just never even occurred to me before so um, that's what I do it's a really good way to clean your brushes without dirtying your water and then you end up kind of muddying your colors in the background so everybody give me a thumbs up or a done when you've done that and I have a question for you all so I like to do it like this so you can see um, that I'm you can adapt painting so my question is what color shall I do my background so pop some suggestions on the um, comments and I will be very happy to uh, uh, improvise and if I've got the colour, I will do it for my background. So I'm just going to lean across. Oh, lots of thumbs up. Excellent. So, any suggestions for the colour? <laughs> purple oh the one color i haven't got purple and pink okay i'm out you guys win purple and pink it is so i'm gonna have to show you how to make purple out of pink as well um purple and pink it is so do you want purple at top no but we'll do purple at the bottom and pink at the top and so guys any color you fancy for your background Look at that, you're all going for purple. Wow, you lot are all totally in sync today. Are you all doing purples and pinks? Is that why you've all picked them? Got some pink colour. So mine is, this is called Permanent Rose. You could also use something like um, a magenta. Magenta is a very, very pure pink colour. I know lots of purples and pinks, Maria. Um, uh, magenta is a very very pure color and if you try and paint straight with it you'll find that it's it doesn't want to sit very flat it's a a really good color to mix with other colors so if you've got magenta and you're going to use that add some white to it you also don't want to um you don't want to have like um too bright a background because you want your um you want your llama to kind of uh, stand out against it and sometimes if you pick too bright a color you'll find that it kind of overtakes the actual object so to mix a good purple with my pink as well i'm going to use ultramarine paint as opposed to something like a cerulean blue so the reason I'm using that is because this color is closer to the pink than this one this one's got yellow in it and yellow is the opposite side of the color wheel to um, purple and it will make our color really muted and sludgy and that's the other reason why I'm using a pink or magenta as opposed to a red because red has is magenta with yet a little bit of yellow added so I'm going to give myself some ultramarine as well. Both these colours are very pure and won't want to um, particularly kind of sit very flat. So to help those, I'm going to add a bit of white as well to both of them. So if ever you've got a good colour that doesn't want to sit flat, things like green particularly can be a bit temperamental um what you want to do is uh add a, a small amount of white and it will just help it sit a little bit flatter so i'm going to start off with my half inch flat brush again um i'm going to go around the edges and then i'm going to switch over to a slightly bigger um chunkier brush to get more ground in so this painting's got lots of texture in it so I'm going to keep that going and have a bit of texture in my background so it all has a kind of theme and sits together so I'm going to take some of my white 
over to the side of my pink. I'm going to mix those in like that till I get the pink that I want. I'm going to then add a bit more water to it and I am going to get it to the consistency of kind of yogurt. And then I'm going to just start to go round the top half of my llama. So I want to get a good colour. So I'm going to go round the only bit that we really have to worry about getting a good edge on is this left hand side of the llama's face. The rest of it is all fluffy. So actually this is quite a good space to kind of start off while you're still concentrating and then as you kind of get to the bits where it's not so important you can be a little bit more kind of loose and less worried about it so I'm using quite a generous amount of paint on this area I'm just going to basically block in where the blend is with my small brush and the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want it to dry quickly. Anyone who was painting with this, me this morning with the sloth knows that we were painting with really thin paint because we wanted our painting to dry quickly so that we could get our sloth in over our rainbow. But this one we're not so worried about because we do still want it to dry. We don't want it to sort of to drown the paper but we're not so worried about this one because we're going to do some blending and we don't want it to it's really hard to blend well it's impossible to really blend well when you're working with um paint that's totally dried so there we go not too worried about the edges on this one want them to be nice and then i'm going to come out down with the pink to roughly the same kind of line as what we were doing before and I'm going to now switch brushes now I've got my edges I'm going to keep my half inch in my other hand and I'm going to grab my big brush and I'm just going to start to block in some of this so what you can do is get a tiny little bit of maybe a brighter pink or a lighter pink don't mix it properly into your colors and just use it to show the brush stroke so paintings don't have to be perfectly flat you can use textures and your brush strokes to create all sorts of exciting and interesting effects and a lot of painters will do different different patterns and textures in their paintings in the backgrounds to make them look more realistic and to make them tie in with the other parts of their painting so this is a painting it's okay to show the brush strokes sometimes so I've got some slightly darker ones and some slightly brighter ones and as this dries off you'll start to see some of the brush strokes showing. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to switch back quickly to my little one. My pink that I've been using, I'm going to now start to transition that over to a purple. So, tiniest little bit of ultramarine. And I will give myself this slightly, ever so slightly lilac-y tint to my pink. And now I'm going to just start to paint in so around my muzzle going up and get to the neck and then I'm going to do the same on the other side and then basically we repeat that all the way down I think I might switch just keep with my because we haven't got quite such a lot of area to cover and I'm going to just add a little bit more blue each time I want to load my brush don't go too purpley too quickly 
because you won't have you won't get that lovely soft transition and also you kind of run out of wet places to go with it so I've got a bit more this is definitely a oh this is a lovely color So, yeah, unfortunately, when you do the Facebook live sessions with us, you have to put up with a little bit of us talking about other sessions that we've got coming up. And we've got two very, very exciting, totally different things for us coming up. So um, tomorrow evening, I am doing my first of a two week course in for absolute total beginners who fancy learning how to oil paint. So this is like idiot's guide to total beginner's guide to um, oil painting so literally starting from scratch explaining what everything is and how to use it um, I'm going to do the same again now with a little bit more of my blue so I'm getting more and more purple as I go down um, and then Maria earlier in this year she did again an absolute beginner's version oh this is a, oh this is a nice purple um life drawing for adults and she did a course in that and everybody absolutely loved it but we got lots of requests for family friendly sessions because obviously life drawing tends to have some bare bottoms in it so um maria has two sessions specifically family friendly ones <coughs> To teach how to do life drawing. Here goes. Hello. Oh, the... So we were joking because I said the postman never comes before lunchtime, and of course he's come early today, which is what she's barking at. So, um, hope. Shh. And and oh, she's such. She's such a dog. She has to always have the last word. Um, and then um, yeah. So she's got two amazing family friendly life drawing sessions so one looking at how to draw faces and one looking at how to draw and proportion bodies so those are perfect we got a lot of people whose kids are doing GCSE art asking for those sessions um, because it's something that doesn't is really important but doesn't always get covered so that is why um, that's that's why she's put those in so so I'm getting darker as you can see I'm going from one side to the other getting these darker colors in I reckon I've got one more color left to go and I'm going to just blend those up a little bit more if you brush hold your brush and just kind of flick really lightly over the top of your painting you can smooth out any marks that you might get so here's my last my last go down here with my bluey purple so you guys have got a lot to answer for with this <laughs> so gonna go right down to the bottom and blend those up so I get it all blocked in and then I just ever so lightly run my brush over the top and it just blends the colors in and as this dries you'll see that they start to sort of soften and blend into each other so that's what we're aiming for here when you're using acrylic paints um, it, you've got two options if you find that your paint is not drying because you put too much on. You can always use a hairdryer and that will help kind of dry your paint off quickly. The other thing you can do is a technique called tonking, which again is using a bit of tissue. Kitchen roll is perfect. Just like to say that I neither Maria or I own a kitchen roll factory. And um, basically I'll show you what you do. So any time everyone does it at some point, they just get too much paint on a painting. Just hold, place your kitchen roll over the top of the wet area, rub it. So don't be tempted to kind of scrub the paint off because you end up with a big smear. 
and then you just peel it off and it will take off any extra paint that you don't want and kind of get you back to the amount of paint that's actually workable so um, painting's tricky having too much paint on your brush makes it even harder so I'm just giving my brush a good clean out and when you've got your background done just give me another um, thumbs up or done and I will know that you're ready to move on <laughs> it's so funny because there's obviously a lag between you seeing me and then me seeing the comments as well <laughs> So I'm going to look back through the comments and see, did anyone say anything about what colours they're doing? So. No, no comments back yet. Yeah, that's a very good point about using... Um, use not don't use loo roll if you're tonking because it yeah it the point of loo roll it's designed to break down really easily and come apart and um and that will um you don't want to leave bits of toilet roll on your painting so kitchen roll kitchen roll's good still haven't heard who's doing shy llamas. llamas so it's very interesting when you're doing animals so those of you who don't know kind of my history I used to be a um, a predominantly a children's wear graphic person so I used to do the prints that you would get on t-shirts and things like that and so my job literally was to design like the cute or the shy llamas and unicorns and things like that that I would that you would see on a t-shirt and so it's I've learned that how the difference just a slight turn of something can make to something like a cute character like this <laughs> oh a shy llama with a lilac background fantastic so I can't see if people are reacting and saying a thumbs up um, on the feed. Um, so if you want to put a done or a heart or a smiley face um, in the comments and then I will know that I'm ready to go. Oh, I'm getting no feedback at all now. Oh no! <laughs> I think we. I seem to get a load all come through all at once. Um, hopefully, you guys have um, got to a point where you can you can move on. Oh, we got it done! Yay! So um, obviously, our background is still really wet, and we need to give that that background a little bit of time to dry off so as you can see on our llama we have got this really cute little um, cheek and we're going to pop that in next so I'm going to use the same colour as I used for my background flesh tone colour and I'm going to add a small amount of red to it and the brush we want to use this time if you've got one is a round brush um, if you haven't got a round brush 
so I've just got a number seven round brush that I'm going to use. The reason I'm suggesting using a round brush is just if you're doing a really perfect circle, it can be a bit hard if you're not that experienced to do a good circle with a flat brush. If you're totally confident with your flat brush, keep with that. That's no problem at all. Oh, lots of thumbs up. Thanks, Maria. Um, so I'm going to take a bit of my flesh tone colour. I'm going to add a small smidge of red to it. We don't want a massive contrast between the two colours because then they'll look like they're blushing. Although if you're doing a shy llama, you can go a little bit redder, a little bit brighter with your pink um, because then it'll look like it's blushing. This is Isabella's verse art and she's... Oh, that, Melissa, that is awesome to hear. We love that feedback. We, Maria and I are both really, really pleased. So, I've got my, my little blushy cheek colour and I'm going to grab my tissue and I'm going to get all the extra paint that I don't want off onto my tissue. So there's just a little bit left and then I'm going to paint my circle so I'm kind of directly above that line that we had coming down from the six o'clock I'm going to fill in my circle get a really good round one and then I'm going to go back really rub out my paint on my tissue and I'm going to just go round the edges of it and that will just soften and make it all look like it's kind of like a soft blended cheek rather than kind of like a solid graphic cheek. If you, your style is more solid graphic, then go with that. Okay, so that is a good tip for any time if you are painting something, um, say you were doing um, something like... Um, kind of cartoony a Japanese cartoony or something like that particularly even if it's a solid graphic one don't mix up a bright pink or use red to do the cheek take a bit of your background color so if you've got a flesh color like this add a little bit of red to that and then use it so you haven't got such a strong contrast so I'm hoping that you guys your background is starting to dry off so what I need to do is to know because we'll depending on what we, we'll, we do next will depend if your llama's neck and body is dry then let me know if your background is dry let me know either way and then we can swap what we do next depending on which bit is dry on your paintings This is why I do them our sessions normally over Zoom because I can see that you guys are still painting or I can have a bit of a chat and stuff. So um, I do prefer Zoom a bit more. <laughs> Don't tell Facebook that though. <laughs> we love you really Facebook, okay? So Abby, awesome news. So is your body dry or it or is your background my neck is dry but not the background awesome so we are going to work only on our neck i think if that's the same for everyone else you're going to kind of like this next bit because as i was saying about we we want texture in our painting and we want we want our our um, llama to look really fluffy so only work we're going to do two layers of this anyway only work on the areas that are dry neck winds i think so yeah um only work on the areas that are dry if you work on areas that are wet you're just going to pull the paint off which isn't a great way of doing it but we want a brush that you kind of 
treating a bit rough so I don't know if you've got um, like me I have favorite brushes that I absolutely love and then I have other brushes that I've had for a long time and um, are a, a bit past their best so if you've got one of those this is the perfect brush to use for this so I've got this big kind of fluffy the paints will come off the handle don't throw these ones away these are brilliant texture brushes and this is a kind of big fluffy round this was a, a watercolor brush that's called a round a round wash brush and um, I'm going to use this this is this is great for using in clouds and things like that as well and just like we did with the cheek where we you we painted with a small amount of paint I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to show you on my hand because I'm using white paint. If you're going to go with a different coloured llama, so like I said, if you're going for a green llama, um, whatever colour you're going to use next, I'm just going to dab most of it off onto my hand. And then if your edges are still wet, avoid those. I'm just going to start dabbing all over the neck of my llama but I don't want to totally cover it I want little bits of that flesh color to still show through and the reason we're going to do that is because we're going to do two layers of the wool and it will help to make it look really fluffy so we're going to do one and then we're going to let that dry off the good thing about doing painting like this where it's nice and um, a, like thin paint is it dries super quickly and you can already see I mean it looks looks a bit like um, it's not got a lot of fur it looks like it's just been sheared but we are starting to get you can see a little bit of that woolly texture in our llama so I've blocked in all of the neck as the white starts to dry it's going to start to disappear back and it'll get a little bit more kind of subtle so yeah but this works equally with your flat square brush or anything and it's particularly good if you've got one that is looking a bit sad and the bristles are all sticking out and things like that I'm then going to use exactly the same technique so we had that circle here didn't we? So I'm going to follow that circle round from earlier on, being careful not to go into any wet paint, still taking off any excess bits. I'm going to follow that round in that circle like this, grab a bit more white paint, go round, round the circle we are going to go up the right hand sides of the ear the brush if you've got a massive brush you're doing this switch brushes and go for a smaller one i'm going to switch over and go for a smaller one for the left hand sides of the ears in a minute and then finally we've got this kind of poofy kind of uh bit of a elvis quiff going on so if your background's dry enough, you can start to put your little poofy quiff or um, fringe or whatever you want to call it, just in like that. So looking a bit, a little bit like he's freshly shaved or freshly um, sheared, but we've started to get a bit of fur on that llama now. Has anyone gone for any colours other than white? The great thing about doing this with the recording is that if you want to ever, this will stay um, on our Facebook page forever now, as long as we're going. So if you guys ever want to have another go at it or um, and change your colours and things like that, it's going to be there for you. So um, there's also a few other free sessions on our Facebook uh on our live feed um like back catalogue so uh for the adults or the older kids there's a a great introduction to having a go at scumbling which um 
will you'll think I've gone strap like totally out of my mind because I get you to paint your canvas totally the opposite color to how it ends up so um yeah so there's that one for adults and older kids you can have a bit of a go at doing a Monet in uh, style impressionist kind of look at Venice with uh, a first go at having to sort of scumble and then we've also got I'm trying to think what other ones we've got on there um, so we've got the rainbow unicorn which was our amazingly popular one from last summer that I think I did like a million times and I think half the population of England has a copy of that one now so that's now free on our um, on our feed and also the totally original new one which was the eye of the tiger so if you're really in we love our tigers but if you're really into your tigers um, that's a, another really good kind of way to have a go Although, if you're going to do that one, I would definitely do our Tiger Tiger session that's coming up this week because that was as popular as the Rainbow Unicorn one. So, hopefully, something somewhere on your painting has started to dry off a bit. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to, I'm going to leave this all just to dry off a little bit. And I'm going to start to work a bit on my background. Um, yeah, so that's the other thing. There's actually different free sessions on our, our YouTube channel. You can find all of the links to everything like that um, in the info part on our Facebook page. So uh, please do have a look at those. I'm going to start to pop in some hearts, some stars, some things like that. Um, if you do want to put in some wording, I've put different the different wording in different places, so it's totally up to you how and where you want to put your wording in, and if you want to. Um, if you're going to go with a metallic colour as well at any point in this, um, because these lovely colours do work really well, and if your drama llama is really dramatic, it might have a little golden crown like my pink one did. Um, so I'm going to now start to put in some hearts and things and I'm going to use some colours that are similar to the ones that I've already used in other places in my background. So they're all a bit kind of tonal looking. So if you've never, I don't know if you've been kind of anyone's ever explained to you a good way to do a heart, but I will just kind of talk to you about that this you might already know but if I'm going to grab I'm going to grab a bit of my purple colour from lower down in the painting and I'm just going to show you a really good way of getting a nice heart so I'm going to go up here and I am going to basically paint a number eight so it's this this eight is obviously you know having its summer holidays and it's going to fill it in, it's laying down, it's having a chill, so that is the first step So, to get in a good heart shape and then basically you just add a triangle underneath like that and that is a really good way of getting a nice even good proportion, good shape um, heart shape so it's really not, you know, it's not tricky it's it's the same principle as any other painting that we uh, which is just making breaking everything down into simple shapes so that's the key to painting and to art is just always breaking everything down when you were a kid and you did a house and it was you know a square with a triangle on top that is the basic principle and as we get older we do tend to lose that so um, don't don't forget that so again my little laying down number eight and then a nice triangle underneath and you just get these lovely big luscious round heart shapes you can change those down if you're if your things more that kind of long lean heart shape I can show you one up here it's the same principle so 
you just you do your number eight lying down and then you just put in a really long triangle underneath and you can get that much more kind of um, thin one that's that is kind of really popular I'm gonna do a few more hearts I'm gonna write drama llama down the side here and I am going to do that with a slightly thinner brush in a minute but I'm going to talk talk you through how to do lettering as well so I'm going to grab myself a bit more pink so another thing that's kind of you know similar basic shapes kind of thing that I've just been rambling on about if you've got to teardrop shape that's a really good that is just a circle with a triangle on top and that will give you a really good sort of um, uh, teardrop shape. So those, again, I know they're really simple shapes, but if you kind of want to really go back to basics and start to really refine getting your shapes done, that's a really good thing to do. So I've got a few more hearts that I'm put in. So that I'll show you what I mean. If you do it from your point first it's really easy to so you can see my left hand top isn't even whereas if I was to have done it the other way I would have got that all nice and even before I put my put it put my point in you can tell now that I've done two sessions this morning because I can't even speak anymore So I'm going to put one more heart in down here. So this is a little number eight. We have a little triangle underneath. I've got a nice... So I've used the lovely tonal colours of my background, but kept kind of in that, um, in that same kind of palette, but they're stronger or they'll be lighter. I'm going to put some white ones in as well in a bit. I've left the bottom for now just because I'm going to um, put my wording in and then I'm going to put my um, put my some more hearts around it and maybe some stars and things you can um, let me know as again if when you're done and you're ready to move on and um, uh, while you're just painting your hearts in or your stars or whatever you decide to put in the bottom um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, doing wording so um, there, years and years ago people there used to be a trade called sign writers and they were specifically artists who painted wording on signs and that skill is kind of like almost lost now but what they used to do was measure like they were exact like you wouldn't believe they would measure out where their sign was going to go their letters were going to go and then paint them in we're not going to go to that degree but we're going to use some of their little kind of tricks that they would do to help us um, get the placement of our words because what we don't want to happen is i start off with big letters up here i'm sure this has happened to you before because i know it's happened to me and you paint down and then by the bottom you run out of space and your letters have got really really small and things like that whereas um, if you do a little bit of planning before you start it's really helpful so you might be changing your wording to something else rather than drama llama but I'm going to work just with Drama Llama and show you how to do it. And then um, this applies to however you do it. So you count the letters, but you count a space as a letter as well. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six for the space, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. OK, so we have 11, 11 um, letters effectively to get in. And I'm going to grab my smaller paintbrush. And I know I've got from here to here to fit my letters in. So I kind of need to find the middle because that's where my space is going to go. 
because actually my words are like the equal amount of letters. If you're doing this professionally, there's whole sorts of details about how wide a letter is to how much space it gets and things like that. But we're just we're just having our first go at sign writing for this. So I know I have to fit drama in here and llama in here. So I'm going to give myself with my blue colour that I'm going to paint in, I am going to find where my middle spot is, my gap, and then I'm going to come up a little bit above it and give myself a little dot. And that is my little reference for later on. And then I'm going to do the similar thing and do myself a little spot just below. Okay, so that is to remind me that I've got to stop with my space. And it's totally up to you if you want to um, change the colours of your letters as you go down. You could change each one and make them rainbow. You could have them in gold or metallic or anything like that. But we're going to start off up here remembering we have one, two, three, four, five letters to fit into this space. So just like we were saying before, what you can do is find the middle of those five letters, which is good. So we're going to have D and R on one side, M and A on the other side, and in the middle, we are going to paint an A. Just like that. So don't go too big with it. You're going to leave yourself some space. And because we're working outwards from the middle, we're not so worried about running out of space at the end. So above that, I'm going to put in my R, like that. The hard bit with this, I find it better, to, like really useful to write down my letters on a piece of paper. Because when you're actually doing these backwards, or in the wrong order, it's actually quite hard to remember how to spell stuff. So I've got draw, and then... I need my ma, so I'm going to put in an M here, like that, and then another A. I've got my little spot there, I'm going to just tweak that into a heart or something like that later on, but um, you could do that with pencil and then rub it out if you don't want to do something like that when you're kind of, when you use sign writing later on. So I'm going to do the same again. So I've got this section here that's going to be llama. I'm going to find my, my middle, so that's roughly here. I've got an A again as my middle letter. And then I'm going to put two L's above and an M and an A below. So, And it's up to you how you want to do that. When you're doing any kind of lettering you can be a bit playful with it so you can have them kind of a bit crooked you can have them different colors this looks good I sometimes put gold spots on the ends of them that looks really good as well so I'm going to do my M again down here and then finally my A and that's a really good way of kind of helping you to kind of um, get your light your writing a little bit more balanced and stuff like that so I really hope no one's put a really really long sentence in there because you're going to be here still 10 o'clock tonight doing that wash my brush out And then, like before, um, we're, we're just going to, I'm going to wait for you guys to give me a bit of a feedback to, so that I know that we're ready to move on. What you can do at this stage, if, um, if you're done and some people are still, we're waiting for them to finish up, because, you know, you know us, no, well, you know me, no rush. Um, you could put some more hearts in. You've got you know where your wording is now so now you can start to put in a bit more of your sort of surrounding details and things like that 
it's really good as well to use different brushes different sized brushes so I'm going to do a big heart over here and then so if you want to oh Gemma you guys are always super speedy so um, if you want to put in some more hearts you can do yeah that's a brilliant idea Maria that would look absolutely amazing so you could um, for example have pink down here and purple up there that would look absolutely stunning so but we, we're doing the recording so you can have as many goes at this as you want to so I'm going to do another number eight I'm going to tweak the angle so that one's kind of sitting out a little bit more away Yeah, awesome. That's exactly it. Oh, what does is, is this your say drama queen? <laughs> so if you end up with a word that's uh, not not like an odd number and it's just even, then all you would do is your middle point would be between two of the letters so you, then you just space the letters on either side hi debbie that's okay this recording will be on our site for ages there's loads more as well so just start that's no rush um what i'll do is i will keep i'll keep going and um melissa if you need any any um me to recap anything just let me know okay so um, what I'm gonna do is your white should be all nice and dry by now and I'm now gonna put on my second layer you'll see a total transformation with this we still need the same kind of thing where we're not gonna put a really solid amount of white on because we want still areas of what's underneath to show through so I'm gonna use my st same brush I'm going to do the same technique of getting all the extra paint off. You can be a little bit thicker with your paint this time than the first time. And this time I'm also going to go over the edges of the neck. And this is, again, helping our llama look super fluffy. Because this painting is all about the texture. And I'm just going to work my way across, dabbing my brush, whichever brush it is you're using. So, particularly those, those sad looking brushes that have seen better days. Those are, as you get, do more painting and you realise that you've, um, you'll realize that actually those ones they're the really useful ones you can use those for trees and landscapes and fluffy llamas and all sorts of stuff using different techniques if you're going to go for apache llama all you need to do is exactly the same once this is dried using your same brush but your different colour and you just dab your paint over the top so in that same pattern and you'll still get your woolly effect um, but you'll still get it in your different colours so I'm now going to go up round the side of the face isn't it making a difference that second layer it's quite astounding what a second can do so you might find that you need a bit of a third layer but that's that's up to you I generally I don't find that I do but it's always, it just depends on which paint you're using. So I'm still using my big brush. I'm going up the right hand side of my ears because I want the right hand side to have slightly wider th fur. 
and then I'm going to switch over to my thinner brush so for those of you who like to know these kinds of things this is a number four round and again this one's seen slightly better days so I'm not worried about it sort of developing little bits of um, uh, sticky out hairs and stuff like that and I'm just dabbing along the left hand side and into a good point so I'm going to repeat that just dabbing up the left hand side into a good point and we have a very fluffy llama now Once you've done your fluff, um, give me a, a done so that I know we're ready to move on. Oh yeah, so um, we don't just do uh, family and kids sessions, we also do adult only sessions and um, Maria is painting on Saturday the Tears of Freya which if you don't know is an absolutely breathtaking painting so she's going to take you step by step through how to recreate your own version of this classic painting and um, she's she, that, that is very much her thing and um she, we've got loads in the on the the website uh we've got the recordings all in the store in the website and i've got a few more we've got i think we've we've got about 76 or 77 in the store currently different recordings and i've got a few more to go on so we're going to be over 80 by um in the next couple of days uh, but um, awesome so yeah so Maria's got um, some beautiful uh, Gustav Klint inspired paintings there's a bit of Degas in there there's some Picasso all sorts of beautiful classic paintings and kind of simplified down so that you can create your own version of those right I, I've got a done so what I'm going to do is our, our um, llama's looking a little bit featureless at the moment. So we are going to give our llama a nose and an eye. So as I was saying before, you can either, you've either got a shy llama or a proud llama. And um, it's really, when you're doing facial expressions like that, it's really subtle the difference between them but you can still get amazing effects with just the slightest tweak of a mouth or the slightest raise of an eyebrow whichever you like and what we're going to do is we're going to pop in so we've got another heart shape this is our number eight lying down with a triangle underneath we're going to stretch it out a little bit wider to make it into this nose shape we're going to come down with a little thin line so your fine brushes for this and we're going to come up and give it a smile so on our shy llama where our head's tilted down this is going to look like a very coy kind of you know lady who's hiding behind a fan giving a little smile that's what we're aiming for with our proud llama who's got its head up it's very like oh I'm the best llama in the planet we're going to also do this it's almost like a smile directly under that ear for our eye and then you can put as many eyelashes on as you like I personally like to do three um, it's just this thing that I like to do rather than loads and loads because um, sometimes particularly if you're not the most delicate of painters you'll find that it's actually quite tricky 
to sort of not turn it into lots of big thick blobs so that is why I'm going with this thinner brush and less eyelashes so first job we're going to do is our nose so we've got our circle regardless of um, whether you have turned your nose downwards or kept it up what we want to do is still have the uh, left hand side of your nose just sticking out slightly over the top of your circle so yours is going to sit dead on um, nine o'clock if you're going for a proud llama and probably about eight o'clock if you're going for a shy one and I'm going to do my number eight so obviously if you're going for a proud llama it's lying absolutely flat if you're going for a bit of a shy one the face is turned down so it's going to be following the same angle as your face does and then I'm going to do a very sort of wide flat triangle underneath to give me my nose shape so it's it's still a heart shape it's just not as um, not as tall it's a little bit wider so once you're happy with that nose shape I, from the point I'm going to do a little fine line line going down to the um, to the edge of our smaller circle and then I'm going to turn my line it's going to come into the smaller circle and then just at the very tip turn and twist up and then little smiles have this little cheek line I'm sure you've seen you know like Mickey Mouse and all those kinds of cartoons have that little cheek line and when you smile that you get those little lines okay for our eye we want to do a nice big deep smile shape so we're gonna go directly underneath the left hand ear and I'm gonna do above the cheek I'm gonna do this nice real deep smile shape just like that and from here I am going to do three eyelashes <laughs> I'm just laughing at your nose time comment Maria <laughs> so our llama's looking quite cute now I think I hope yours is as well if you're going to do patchy colors on your llama this is a really good point to do it so um, if you're going to go with the browns or or black or I don't know you could go green whatever you fancy um, I keep picking out green that's because I just remember someone doing a green llama at some point so um, yeah you can do your now's a really good point this should all be dry and you can go back and put your other coloured patches on. Um, for those of you who are staying one colour, the next thing we're going to do, so if you've got a nice metallic that you want to use and you wanted to do a crown or you want to do some stars or some hearts and things like that, grab yourself your metallic. If you haven't got a gold, then a good Got way of mixing a golden -y colour is use a bit of white, always a bit of white to help cover the colours that are underneath it, some yellow, and then the tight get your smallest brush, get your um, a little bit of brown and mix that to your colours. It was a really tiny amount and that will create a nice golden -y yellow colour. So I'm gonna use my fine brush again and I'm going to add a little bit of water you might find depending on whether you splashed out on good paints or not whether you need more than one um, coat of paint with your gold um, I tend not to buy lots of expensive paints because I, I use a I use a lot and B um, I want to kind of have the same kind of experience as you guys do with your painting if you've got lots of posh your okay Kate so um, in that case if you're gonna go with some gold 
um, or silver or another colour, do a bit more work on your background and give it a bit more of a chance to dry off. Excuse me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I'm going to pop in some more, so that you guys know, I'm going to pop in some more hearts. So these do start to look really amazing after you've put, popped in a kind of a couple of colours or coats with the gold. Um, silver works particularly silver and purple work really well together so if you wanted to go with that if you don't have those kinds of metallic colors you can just use gray so um, just the thing to keep in mind with gray is that it goes darker as it dries so go with a nice light color for the crown if you're going with the crown basically I'm going to do a small box that's only got three sides so I'm going to go one side up there one side going straight up there I'm going to join those together so we've got three sides of our box I'm just going to scroll down my page so I can make sure that you guys can see and then I'm going to come across from the top of each side and join it up with the other corner so I'm putting a kind of cross through it and then everything inside that box you can fill in with your gold like that and then we're going to do a triangle in the middle so if you imagine that there's a line so I can put a spot there there's a line that goes across the top of the two points and a line that comes up from the middle where they crossed so just there and then we're going to make that into a little triangle as well so that's a good way of getting a nice even crown as well I was saying about putting some gold spots on my lettering so particularly as it's purple on my pink one I've done this so on the points of each letter you can put a bit of gold metallic if you want so do you remember I put those points on here to remind me where to stop you can make those into hearts of different colors and all sorts of things if you want to you could ah do you know what I could do that would look really cool I'm gonna put a little another little crown on my D my drama llama so a truly dramatic drama llama I think so some more spots we do have to be a bit careful we don't smudge those in the mid in a minute unless you unless you're left-handed which makes it easier for you that is why artists tend to paint on the start off on the side which is the opposite side to the their main dominant hand that they paint with so again I can put in some more hearts and hopefully your um, your body has dried now your fur has dried and if it has we can um, start to put in our pom-poms so um, if you are going with another color and you're going to do that um, that's no problem if you just watch this next bit so you know what we're going to be doing next and then I can stay on the recording once everything else is finished and I can help you with any bits that need doing so that goes for anything if anyone needs any assistance with anything so for our pom-poms this really is the point where you can go mad with any colors that you want I've done this loads of different ways this has got this particular one's got a black string because um, I was doing one that didn't have any gold on for this um, you can go with a golden string you can go with a colored string just something that sort of suits the colors that you've gone with so with this I am going to go with gold and then my pom-poms that I've used here 
I can um, I'm going to keep those in the color palettes that I've used elsewhere in the painting or if you want to you can go with the rainbow colors like the original one over there so I'm going to do three lines that are gonna with my thin brush loop across so there's a slight curve to them so you can see there's one it's like it's kind of wrapped around its neck I'm sure there's some health and safety thing that's like don't don't wrap pom-poms around a llama's neck but just for this painting we're not going to worry about that and I've done my three lines it's a bit like a ballet dancer where they wrap their ribbons around their neck and then I'm going to keep with a round brush but I'm going to dig out my slightly thicker one that I was using earlier for my hearts and if you want to a really good way of getting round spots or like things like this is to use a um, cotton bud so a cotton bud dipped in paint will give you really lovely good round circles to um, for that so that's something if you that now I'm going to keep with my color theme on here and I'm just going to use my thicker round brush and I don't know if you can see I'm just giving it a little bit of a kind of a wiggle don't have too much paint on because it's quite hard to control I'm leaving a space between each one because I'm going to come back and put different colors in between so I'm going to do two on this next row and then I'm going to do three again on the lower row so it's nice sometimes to have lots and lots of different colors in a painting and other times it's nice to have things all a bit more kind of um, tied up and uh, kind of planned and put together with lots of different tones of colors so have an experiment and and see rather than always feeling like you have to use color that you've got on your palette all the time so I'm gonna pop some of these in so I like to leave a bit of a space between them but that's up to you whether you want to put like millions and millions of pom-poms on there or leave a bit of space and then I'm going to go with my darker purple as well so oh I've got a bit too much paint on my brush there let's work that through there we go I'm going to pop that one there so the only thing I personally would do with this just to kind of finish it up um, is I would put a few white hearts on this just because then I'm echoing that final colour that I've got which is the white of the fur so but that's your totally your choice it's just what I was saying about making everything tie up together so that your painting looks really kind of complete so that so Melissa don't worry too much um, like I said I will stay on I'll stay on the um, uh, on the recording after we've finished and um, and help you if you want um, yes you can watch the recording the other option as well is we were saying about the Facebook group so the artists hangout if you um, and this goes for everyone if you want to take a photo of your painting and pop it on on the group Maria and I are always on it and I'm gonna go straight on there for a little bit after I finish the session um, just so that anyone who needs any help wants some feedback or has any questions I can be over there and give you a hand so there we go that ladies and gentlemen is my
Drama Llama. I really hope that you have enjoyed that. I hope that you've had a good exper uh, experiment with your colours. I hope that you've learnt an, some new ways of doing some texture and also about breaking things down into really simple shapes. And um, as I just said, please, please go over to the Artist's Hangout and uh, put your pictures up so that we can give you some feedback. I promise you we are always incredibly kind. And everyone else in the group is always like, wow, that's amazing. So just like you look at their paintings and go, that's fabulous, they will look at yours and go, that yours is fabulous. Um, and please, please do join us for one of our other sessions. We have got the... Um, I've, I've got the awesome um, golden maned uh, unicorn magic tomorrow and we've got the giraffe coming up and also um, oh thanks Gemma thanks lovely um, and then yeah also like lots of exciting sessions coming up over the next I think it's five weeks isn't it now five or four or five weeks of sessions um, I think we're pretty much every day so would love to see you and also tell your friends tell everyone about us because uh, not everyone knows us and facebook doesn't always want to let everyone know that we're here so if everyone is ready i'm gonna um i'm gonna end the session and i'm gonna grab myself a coffee and then shoot over to the artists hangout so before I do, one last thing actually. So thank you to the amazing Maria, as always, who supports me with the comments. And uh, at some point we're going to have to do it the other way around. So thank you, lovely, lovely Maria. And I will see you all soon. Goodbye. <laughs>